Hello, this lecture will cover the basics surrounding photosynthesis and everything related to plants as it is required for this course. So let's look at photosynthesis by looking at the equation. The equation of photosynthesis is pretty simple. So we're going to start off with carbon dioxide. We're going to add H2O. So if you've heard of your people saying you should talk to your plants, this is one of the reasons why you produce carbon dioxide. And of course, we all know we should water our plants. All of this is going to create glucose, which is a large carbon molecule, in addition to oxygen. This may look like the reverse of cellular respiration because it is, um, but we're going to talk about how we can take these small carbon molecules and these small water molecules and then a eventually builds up glucose and oxygen in photosynthesis. So photosynthesis is going to be essentially where we capture energy from light and we use it to make glucose and other organic molecules. Photosynthesis will occur in green algae and in plants as well. So it's important that we learn about photosynthesis because this is where we get all of the oxygen in our atmosphere from. So yes, it's a, it is very important to understand how plants produce um, glucose and how they use energy from the sun to be able to survive, but we are very interested in looking at one of those byproducts, which is oxygen. So let's talk a little bit about the food chain. Um, with the food chain, we're going to be looking at our sun and our producer, which is where our plants are. And then we'll talk about a few other items such as heterotrophs and autotrophs as well. So the trophic level refers to this term heterotroph. A heterotroph um, must eat food or something organic to be able to stay alive. So hetero means different. So this means an organism that eats something different than, you know, itself. So that would be like a bird, a human, a dog, all these different things must eat some type of organic food. The opposite of a heterotroph is autotroph. And you may know the word auto just means, you know, ability to do itself. So this is where um, it can actually make organic materials from inorganic sources. So this will be something like a, a plant or fungi um, or something that can take something inorganic like the sun and be able to make its own organic molecules. If you dive into autotrophs a little more deeper, we have a more specific category called photoautotrophs. These photoautotrophs will use light as a source of energy. So photo is related to light. Um, and this will include things like our green plant, our algae, and then also cyanobacteria. So let's talk about photosynthesis and where it can occur. Photosynthesis can occur on any part of the plant that's green. So that includes um, the small little stems as well as any fruit that's unripened. They're all going to have chloroplasts, which we'll talk about in a second. But the major place that photosynthesis occurs is our leaves. And one of those reasons is because our leaves are spread out. So our leaves have a very high surface area, meaning, you know, if you look at a leaf, it looks something like this, right? It's going to be really wide. And that's going to allow the sun to be able to hit that leaf at very different points. So that is one place, that is one reason, excuse me, that leaves are very, very great for photosynthesis. But any place on the plant that is green, including these unripened strawberries or even the stems, all of that can be a location of photosynthesis. So let's dive into the chloroplast, um, which we will be covering a lot in this section. Um, and before we go into the chloroplast, let's take one step further back and actually look at the structure of the leaf itself. So chloroplasts we know are these little green organelles which are designed to carry out photosynthesis and we'll talk about their structure a little bit deeper in just a second. Um, but the green color of the chloroplast is actually due to a pigment called chlorophyll. So the pigment or the color or the dye is called chlorophyll, while the structure itself is called a chloroplast. Now, this word, I don't want you to get confused about it. A stoma is singular and a stomata is plural. So these are the holes that are found in our leaf. So 
we're going to be producing a number of gases, including carbon dioxide and oxygen, and we have to have a hole or a pore to let the gas go in and out of the leaf. So these holes or pores are called stomas or stomatas. So you can find this on a leaf. It's like how your skin has pores. This is going to help the gas go in and out of the leaf. Now let's dive into the chloroplast a little bit more. This is what a chloroplast look like, and we're going to cover not all of these terms, but a few of them I will highlight. So a thylakoid are going to be these oval shaped discs that you find inside of the chloroplast. They look like this, almost like a, a York peppermint patty, if you know what that candy is, or a little oval. And an individual disc, so just one single disc is called a thylakoid. Um, this is going to be where the chlorophyll is actually found. So the chlorophyll is actually found in the thylakoid itself more specifically. The thylakoid is going to have a membrane, right? So this red line here would represent the thylakoid membrane. It's just like any other membrane we talked about. It will surround the thylakoid. If you have a stack of thylakoids, so let's say you stack them on top of each other, which is how they're typically found, that is called a granum. So if you see in this image here, um, an individual one is going to be a thylakoid, an entire stack is going to be a granum. And the internal fluid that you find inside of the chloroplast is going to be called stroma, okay? This looks a lot like stoma, so please don't get it confused, but it is a stroma. There's that extra R there. I like to think the R stands for room. So, you know, the inside of the, of the chloroplast is going to have some room to it. You know, maybe that helps, maybe it doesn't, but this is going to help you. So a stroma with an R is going to represent the room part of it. So please keep that in mind. Okay, so this is just, again, a picture of our plant. If you're starting from the outside, we have our uh, stomas, which are our pores. That's going to be on the leaf. And then if you zoom in a little bit closer, you're going to run across your chloroplasts, which of course are made up of thylakoids, granums, and then the stroma that you find and the inner fluid. So I mentioned the thylakoid membrane earlier and a lot of the photosynthesis process will occur in this point. So I want to make sure that we mention it and I kind of start to introduce you to these terms photosystem, which I will get back to in just a second. So the term photosynthesis itself is going to give us a clue as to what happens as we make our glucose molecules. So photo means light and we'll talk about that in just a bit, but the photo part of photosynthesis is related to our light reaction. So that's going to require some light, while synthesis actually means make. So we're going to make up our big glucose molecule in the second part, which is called the carbon fixation reactions. So photosynthesis does consist of these two components, the light dependent reactions, and the carbon fixation reactions. The light dependent will occur in our disc, the thylakoids, while the carbon fixation occurs in the stroma or the space within the chloroplast. So to put a few words with what I mentioned, the light reaction will use that light energy, so the light will come in and hit these thylakoids. It's going to occur in that thylakoid membrane, and it's going to produce some things we've seen, some things we haven't. One thing it produces is ATP. The other thing is oxygen. And finally, NADPH is going to be a molecule that we haven't seen so far. That's NADPH, okay? Um, and we'll talk about NADPH. With the car Calvin cycle, in the Calvin cycle, this occurs in the stroma, so this is going to be in that space that we see. It's going to use the energy we made in the light reactions or the ATP and the NADPH to take carbon dioxide and turn it into a bigger carbohydrate. So again, in our light reactions, we take that light from the sun, we produce ATP, NADPH, and oxygen, 
And then we take those energy molecules from here and we use those energy molecules to build up a larger group of carbohydrate. So again, remember, photosynthesis is anabolic. We're going to be building something and we need some energy because that is an endergonic reaction. So I've been mentioning light a lot, and I think it's important that we talk about um, some of the terms related to light so that we're on the same page. So all type of light is going to fall onto this electromagnetic spectrum. An electromagnetic spectrum is just a range of wavelengths and the types of waves that they're going to produce. So a wavelength is going to be the distance between two peaks. So if you think of a mountain, a mountain's going to have a peak, right? Um, the distance between two pe peaks is going to be a wavelength. It's a wavelength. So some wavelengths are going to be very large. That are, those are going to be things like TV and radio waves. And some wavelengths are going to be very small. That's your gamma rays, your x-rays, those type of aspects. But right here in the middle, we have visible light. Visible light falls right in the middle of our electromagnetic spectrum. And with invisible light, you're going to see different types of colors. So different colors that we're, we recognize, red, orange, yellow, uh, green, blue, indigo, violet, all of that are going to, all of those colors are going to have different wavelengths. And depending on what we see, or the wavelength that it displays is going to be how we interpret that color. Now, there is a term here called a photon, and a photon is going to be a particle of light energy. So every time the sun um, shines and it's going to release those rays, each one of those rays or each particle of light energy is just called a photon. So think of a photon as being like the unit of light, for lack of better words, right? Um, we're going to be receiving photons, and those photons are going to represent um, a different wavelength depending on where it comes from. So it's a photon of yellow light. It will be coming from the visible side um, somewhere around, let's say, uh, 700, uh, 575 nanometers for a wavelength or something like that. So this is just a few of the terms that you may have seen. The wavelength is the distance between two peaks. Electromagnetic spectrum is the entire um, organization of the different types of rays and waves that are out there and that we've discovered. And a photon is just a particle of light energy. So a little bit about chlorophyll um, and a little bit about colors, really. So a lot of pigments that we see are going to be that particular color because they absorb some light energy and reflect others. So what does that mean? That means when we look at a leaf um, and we see it's green, it's because it absorbed every other color except for green. So if this is our green chlorophyll, that means when we looked at it and our eyes visualize it, it actually absorbed and kind of canceled out all of the other colors the only color it did not cancel out was green, which is why we see it. So it's able to reflect that green wavelength. So that's what happens with our chlorophyll. It's able to absorb some light energy and reflect others. So it's absorbing everything but the green, which is why we see that green color. A little bit about these plant pigments is we have three different types of pigments that are found within plants. One is chlorophyll A, that's going to be light green, you see here. The second one is chlorophyll B, that's dark green. And the least present one is carotene. So a great example of these plant pigments is when you're looking at, um, or when it's the fall time, and you notice that the plants or the leaves are starting to change color. It's because these really dominant green pigments are starting to fade away and once they leave all we have left is the carotene which gives us those oranges and golden and burgundy colors uh, because that green pigment is starting to fade away.
So finally, I want to talk a little bit about this light energy. As I mentioned, these photons are going to eventually hit our cells, right? A, a particle of light energy will hit our cells. Now remember, our cells have protons, electrons, and neutrons in the middle. So once these electrons absorb this photon or see that photon, they become very excited. And an excited electron is also an uns unstable electron. So think about um, this light coming in, hitting this electron, and this electron gets so excited. So look at my, my red pen. It gets so excited, it jumps up to the next level. So again, light energy hits the electron. The electron gets so excited, you see it shaking, and it's going to jump up to the next level. Remember we had our first shell and our second shell. Um, as it jumps up to the next level, that electron is going to release either heat or light. So as we have that electron jump from one shell to the next, in our pigments, we can actually transfer it um, to another molecule or we can capture it. So that movement of the electron going from a stable state getting charged up by that light is going to cause the electron to jump to the next shell level. And as it jumps to the next shell level, it's going to release heat or light. And that jumping of the electron will allow us to transfer that electron to a different shell or allow us to capture it. So you may have to rewatch uh, just this portion here in which you realize that Again, light will hit the electron or the electron will absorb the light. It will become excited and jump to a new shell. As it jumps to a new shell, it releases heat or light and that heat or light and the, elect the excited electron can be captured or transferred. Um, so we're gonna talk about that in our photosynthesis process. So this is going to be the conclusion of the for first portion um, and please watch the next portion as we talk about the photosystems a little bit more.